Hey, man, what's up? How's it going? Good. I just got the, uh, I'm always amazed when Zoom works seamlessly. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? It's pretty rare. Like the fact that it just came on and like I'm looking at your face and we're t and like there's we're talking is just an absolute miracle. <laughs> uh, right on, man. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are today. Cool. Nice. I can talk about that. <laughs> you know a little bit about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Where are you from, Henry, originally? Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. all right. Born and raised in LA? Raised in LA. Uh, lived in New York for a few years, and I live in LA again now. Cool. Yeah, we're in San Diego. I'm from oh, cool. Southern California, so right on. Nice. Uh, well, tell me about growing up in LA. Were you in, like, downtown area? Were you in the valley? Uh, I grew up on the west side um, and uh, spent a lot of time surfing and uh you know trying to uh be popular and um <laughs> uh I had, I had a nice time growing up in LA it was good I played in a lot of bands and um my school my high school had a great jazz program that's where I sort of learned um any and all you know technical uh music skills and mm -hmm. um and then would sort of secretly uh i would like moonlight as a person in bands of you know that played original music outside of school so what was the first instrument you learned i learned piano first uh my parents put me in uh piano <laughs> when i was like six years old um and i loved it i mean uh I, you know, I always played air guitar. But okay. It was until, uh, I was probably like nine or so that um, my dad was like, okay, it's time to actually put you on a guitar because um, his, his grandma um, was a piano teacher and he grew up in a very musical family. And I, I think he had this belief, which I um, subscribe to as well, that it's like important to, start things out on the piano um like as a little kid oh just, totally you know there, there's something um i don't know there's just there's something very foundational about like the linear nature of um the keys on a piano and uh it's like a good baseline for learning other instruments um and then yeah when i was like nine i started nine or maybe ten i started playing guitar okay and with with that, you you said you're in the jazz band at school, or you, were you in the orchestra? No, I was. It it was like sort of uh, combo jazz. Oh, okay. And yeah. you played? Would you play? Did you play guitar in the band? Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. You got to play one of the cool <laughs> instruments then, instead of like the clarinet or you know the flutes and stuff. At least yeah. you got you got it on the guitar. It, it's funny, like the, you know, there's not when you're learning jazz. There isn't a ton of, you know, like the st standards and um, those, you know, like whatever Watermelon Man or like, you sure. know, Herbie Hancock stuff is, you can definitely play it on guitar, but it's more suited to like sax or, mm -hmm. you know, other instruments. Um, so I kind of learned, and, and also my jazz teacher, it was always sort of like annoyed with the, or he had a sort of, he was predisposed to thinking we were going to be too loud. Oh, sure. You no, know, because we're playing out of amps and everyone else isn't. Yeah. Uh, so I've always been super, like, I, it's something that I, to this day, I like still have to get over. Like the, whenever I'm like sound checking at a show or something, like the, uh, the sound guy is always like, uh, you can turn the guitar up. Like, <laughs> it up and I'm like oh are you sure okay I guess I will you know I'm like <laughs> yeah. sure about it like I don't want to be too loud because of like my jazz teacher in high school I don't know that that's that's, that's more of a subject for my psychiatrist maybe <laughs> well it makes sense I mean I've seen so many bands especially like in you know smaller bars and smaller clubs and they just 
crank the guitars like way too ha- loud and it just drowns out everything. Yeah, completely. And it's also like, it takes up so much of the EQ as well, you know, because uh-huh. like it gets the, the range of like a guitar, that sort of like mid thing. It like really fucks with the highs and the lows. Oh yeah, it just destroys your voice too. And it's, <laughs> when it's, for sure. Yeah, no, that, that's funny. Well, at least, you know, it, it could have been worse. Like you could be too loud and have to dial it back. So yes, that is true. <laughs> on the bright side, right on. So when did you start playing in bands? You said high school. Were you in a band? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I've been in bands playing my uh, uh, like original music that I wrote, had written since I was probably like in sixth grade. Wow. Yes, a long time. A so you of, started writing songs that early too. I did, yeah. Uh, I think I I wrote like um, I don't know. I've I've always I I I was a very like anxious kid with some obsessive compulsive tendencies, I would say. And like I definitely always had like a thing where if I sang a little bit of something or whatever, like I would always have to resolve it. Mm-hmm. Know, or it would have to be like an even amount of measures even like before I knew like what th- that really meant like from a, t- a technical like perspective mm-hmm. uh so like I I remember like making up little teeny songs and stuff in my head when I was like really young like five or six kind of area <laughs> and then uh when I was in about sixth grade I started playing in a trio me playing guitar and singing drummer and, and bass player uh and we were called bedhead <laughs> that's a good name <laughs> yeah i think looking back on it like definitely our drummer's dad was like was a deadhead oh he was so he's like a i like he thought of it like at the time i was like oh nice like this is a really like creative original name but now i'm like oh wait that's just a play on deadhead <laughs> no i <laughs> i thought it was a uh a, a nod to the the hairline have you seen like the for sure <laughs> but you know honestly that 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 could that could be too because we we would like we'd have like sleepovers and then like play in the morning <laughs> like have bad head so maybe yeah. that, who knows that's funny <laughs> so when did you break out and start doing you know your solo stuff with henry hall yeah that was after college um when i was living in new york did you go to college for music? No, I, I studied film in college. Uh, oh, okay. I studied some music too, um, but I didn't like major in it or anything like that. Um, so you went to be a, like, you wanted to be a filmmaker? I, I, it was liberal arts school, so I didn't oh. really know exactly what I sure. want. Kind of humanities, something or other. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I ended up, gravitating towards the film school um which i think was a good thing in the end for me because i think i would have would have been a little like too in my head about the music stuff if i mm-hmm. was th- there was something sort of like cathartic about the fact that like it wasn't what i was doing in school and like extracurricularly um mm-hmm. like i would kind of go to film class and then like play in my band like afterwards um, okay so it sort of like separated the worlds a little bit in that way and like i don't know there was a nice cross-discipline thing with the film like i felt like what i learned in film school sort of informed my music mm-hmm. so douchey something. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense i mean they kind of they kind of do go hand in hand so to speak. I mean, yeah I, they do um like uh my, I had a film professor who said something that like kind of sticks to me and I feel like really applies to music, especially pop music, mm-hmm. um, which is he's like, you want a movie you make to be like a taut piece of uh, rope and and not like a stretched out piece of taffy that like la- has like moments where it dips and lags. Oh, Sure. And like, I don't, for some reason that like visualization is always stuck with me. So like whenever like I'm writing a song, I'm like, okay, are there like taffy moments? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. It's like <laughs> interesting, but then like it kind of fades for like yeah. a chin or something. Like, so I always, I don't know. I just sort of like keep that in mind. Um, 
but anyway, uh, yeah, I started doing the solo stuff after college. Um, with those call with that band in college, did you guys just play like locally like in New York area or were you taking it serious enough to like tour and stuff? No, we didn't tour anything. We recorded a, f- a couple EPs, um, kind of learned about like recording with, oh, with cool. bands, uh, which was great. Um, and uh, we're still close friends to this day, but we sort of, you know, decided to not pursue things post college. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, I started doing the solo thing right after school and put out my first EP like within the, that year of graduating from college. And, um, and now, and now I'm talking to you now I'm on <laughs> their podcast. Now you're here. Yeah. So that, 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 uh, debut EP was the self-titled AP or EP. Sorry. Um, when you when recorded that and, and wrote that, like, did that kind of start your career going? Like, how did you kind of, you know, break out and you know you you've got a couple records out your debut records coming out um yeah. a bunch of streams like were you what was the like build up from from putting that first ep out um that's sort of like uh, the first ep um along with a single called talk mm-hmm. um which i sort of like um after the fact put onto streaming services and stuff uh that sort of like begat my career so to speak Mm -hmm. uh started playing uh clubs in new york um like did a few college tours and stuff um just playing at college like different colleges yeah yeah like in the northeast that's kind of cool was how was that experience like were you playing like on stages or did you go like i know like in the comedy world they could either be on a stage or you're like in the cafeteria or something yeah (laughs) (laughs) i would say it was sort of like a mix of both okay Um, like one time we played a show a show at uh like a sort of outdoor it was like a picnic for a very, very specific like club or group at this school that it was like some sort of student government thing, but it was like a subgroup of the student government. It was like the okay. earth. It was, it was, it was bizarre. And they were like, every, they were serving like sloppy Joes outside. <laughs> and it was like really hot. And it was like, it was a really, it was a bizarre experience. Like I, I never thought people would be like the entire audience would be listening to our music and eating sloppy joes like in unison it was really bizarre <laughs> um but yeah my my first ep brought brought me to that show baby <laughs> there you go sloppy joes <laughs> so okay so you put out the ep um and from there did you sign to a record label no i've i've never uh, been signed. I've been in independent since the beginning. Yeah, I, I worked with uh, Reverb Nation. Okay, for a minute there, um, they had this sort of program to cultivate like emerging artists, um, which was a nice experience, and uh, that actually brought me to um, uh, the, a guy named Al Carlson, who's a producer engineer who works primarily out of the Mexican summer studios in New York. Okay. Uh, they're like a small label. Um, and with him, I re- recorded my second EP, My Friends Don't Like Me. Um, and uh, that was a really good experience. Um, Different than the first EP? I kind of like knew more about where I wanted to go sonically. And also like, I was a little, I think my songwriting had grown to some degree and like, I was a little bit more invested in, um, my lyrics and, um, not necessarily like a message that I wanted to get across, but like sort of an attitude, a sense of humor or like a sentiment, I guess. Uh, so those songs are like a little bit more thoroughly um, developed, I feel like. Uh, okay. Yeah. Whereas the first EP 
I think melodically I, I was writing from a good place, mm-hmm. but like I go back and listen to a few of those songs and the sort of broadness of the lyrics aren't, mm-hmm. I, I know that they're like not really purposeful. <laughs> like it was, okay. I, I didn't really, honestly, like I didn't really care about lyrics as much then I feel like. Okay. My second EP, I sort of came to realize that lyrics were important, uh, I guess. I, I don't, I, it's, I, it just sort of happened naturally. Like, I, I think when you come from, because, you know, I, I approach writing to, still to this day, but like I always had up to that point approached writing strictly from like a musical standpoint. Um, mm-hmm. like I would come up with a chord progression first, like always, and then like a piece of a melody and, and then a few words would kind of like pop up and then that would become the song. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that I realized like, oh, you know, maybe there's value to thinking of a phrase or a sentence or like a stanza or, or something and writing a song like around that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's, I kind of came to, that kind of came to fruition uh, in the in the second EP. Oh, nice. Very, very cool. And with those songs too, you did like, I'm just looking on Spotify. Yeah. You had like a live in the van sessions. Oh, yeah. The jam in the van. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Were you guys playing inside of a van and what, we just did. in parking lots? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's a really cool uh, uh, show, I guess. They, they uh, take bands. Um, sound, sound, I was about to say they take take bands into vans but that sounds really creepy <laughs> they pull up in a white van they put you inside yeah, exactly they <laughs> giant um sort of rv that they've tricked out into a studio inside um and uh you sort of cram in there and there's like a little area outside where your you know friends can like hang out and like have a beer and whatever and um the you know, I, I was I was pretty blown away by like the operation. Honestly, it was really cool, mm-hmm. um, and the quality of the recordings were great. Yeah, uh, I listened to a few of them, and I was really, like, really, really impressed. I was getting, that's why I was wondering. I didn't know if it was just like a live. Okay, we're you're in a van and like one yeah, mic. <laughs> it's like a series kind of thing. Like a lot of really cool groups have have played it for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, then was, you, and they give you the recording, obviously, to to put out and, yeah. and stream. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. Cool. And then the next EP you released, questions, comments, and cons- questions, comments, concerns. Yeah. What was like the milestone from from that EP? Would you say? Yeah. yeah um, I would say that one. Uh, I was a little bit. I I I think like things kind of came to a head from a melodic sensibility point of view and from like a lyrics lyrical sensibility point of view to some degree um and i was a lot more involved with the uh recording and like engineering process Mm -hmm. process um like i had learned enough up to that point to really make it so like i knew exactly i mean i i always um I'm able to like sort of direct what happens from like an engineering producing standpoint, mm-hmm. but there are like, there were always like a few things that I kind of just had to, had to leave up to like the engineer in the studio. But this time, like I, when I made like the demos for these songs, I was like, okay, like these are the sounds, like the, the, the finished recordings are just going to sound like studio versions of these demos. As sure. The demos being like something pretty like substantially uh different than uh the the finished product Mm -hmm. um so so yeah i mean i think it was in that way it was just sort of like a more comprehensive um project like uh and and the i think i filled in some more gaps from a um lyric writing standpoint um 
and a melodic one too. Uh, like I think I learned uh, a lot of, about uh, like harmony and uh, especially like vocal harmony mm -hmm. uh, on My Friends Don't Like Me. Um, it's easy to go overboard, I think, with like the overproducing or overarranging of, of vocals for me sometimes. Um, and I think on questions, comments, concerns, I was like, okay, maybe it's, there are points here where I can be a little bit more sparse. <laughs> <laughs> How many like harmonies and shit I <laughs> onto, uh, this track. Like it doesn't have to sound like a soccer stadium. Sure. <laughs> um, Yeah. But but honestly, I I sort of buried the lead a little bit. But the, the questions, comments, concerns was the first time I worked with um, my good friend and producer of my debut album, Nito uh, Dylan Bostick. Okay. Uh, I actually went to college with, and we who we uh, he, we we kind of collaborated like here and there, but not too much. And it wasn't until that this EP that I was like, he, cause he had moved back to LA. I had moved okay. back to LA at this point. And I was like, Oh my God, like I, Dylan is in town. Like I've always loved him and I've, and I've always like admired the um, produ his production and what he does as a producer. Cause he worked with a lot of my, of my friends from college. Uh, and I hit him up and it kind of turned out that we were like really on the same page musically. Like we established like a rapport incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I found like he, he has a really keen sense of um, what, what needs to be done on a track and like what the right uh, moves to make are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without like, sacrificing the sort of original thought behind the song sure so like if i i would like finish a vocal take and be like oh i think i think that was the one and then like dylan would come in my ear and be like that was the one <laughs> you're like all right <laughs> or or i'd like come in and i'd be like about to say like ah, you know i kind of like this this guitar needs to be like a little bit uh a little bit more like metallic sound mm -hmm. and like a little freakier and he'd be like you know i was thinking like on this rhythm guitar part like it needs to have like more of like a metallic -y, like freaky sound to it like do you what do you think and i'm like i was literally about to say that <laughs> so he, he he's very like tuned into the songs um and i thought that he he also like his uh like the sounds that he uses in logic and and in his like engineering stuff and like his sample packs and stuff are are amazing and i oh i thought they were always like i'd sort of give him the demo and he'd show me like the versions like of what i had put it put in the demo but like upgrade you know i guess yeah. <laughs> yeah this is exactly like now the song is like worthy of being put out as opposed to like sounding like a demo so yeah i i uh his his expertise in that area was infinitely valuable for yeah. sure. And he produced the, he produced uh, that EP and the new record. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he was the first time we'd ever worked together. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. And then, and then uh, it went really well. And uh, I was like, do you want to do a full length album? And he was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, well, tell me about the full length. You, yeah, you man. Out, what in the beginning of next month, yeah, October sixteenth. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think that it's kind of like a culmination of like all these different things I've been going on and on about. Uh, sure. Uh, I I think that it there's the album has has very dark parts and very ecstatic and happy light parts as well. Um, 
but they're sort of all tied together by some pretty sort of like undercutting and like, um, <laughs> uh, you know, um, uh, I don't, I don't want to say cynical, but like, uh, just sort of like dry sense of humor, like understanding that like everything is futile and nothing really matters, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but with like a smile on your face, you know? Sure. Um, so I think that like, there is this, uh, sense of humor or like sarcasm, uh, that like ties everything together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, the, the, the album never goes more than like one or two songs in a row with, you know, that dark sentiment or the light sentiment, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's like balanced out in a good, good way. And it's like a, it's sort of like a wild up and down ride in, in that sense. Um, but, you know, I think that at the same time, like peppered in or moments of like a lot of sincerity uh -huh. um, and uh, honesty, I hope, and like transparency about how I feel about myself and like my anxiety and mm -hmm. insecurities about life. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, I think it's like it's it's an anxiety album. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. but but with like with like a smile the whole time. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, yeah, I, I I feel you. Yeah. And I I think funnily enough, I mean like I the the it's a collection of songs like that, you know, probably the oldest song on it was written probably like four years ago something oh, like that. wow yeah okay. and like the newest one was written like a year i mean like right before we started recording um so it really like runs a big gamut of of time and in, in my life uh so it, it does sort of like that's why it is sort of it has this like wide scope to it i think mm -hmm. um but I think at the same time, though, it's somehow like even though it's not about this time in history, like it does, it does fit. Like I, the 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 sort of up and down, the kind of mania of the album, mm -hmm. uh, and the f going from one end of the spectrum to the other, um, <laughs> from track to track, often uh, kind of fits with like how at least I've been feeling for the past however many months you know <laughs> yeah is i wake up uh feeling completely nihilistic and like i, I don't want to do anything and i'm sure. like <laughs> um but then other days i wake up and i'm like well you know the world is ending i might as well have a real <laughs> and i like <laughs> thing and have it's time, you know, so there, there's a, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a, a, a split in that way, you know, there's, there's both ends of the spectrum. I sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the, the first single you put out is Guy. That's yeah. The current single. I love the music video. Thank you. Did you shoot that uh, in quarantine or was that done? Yeah, we, we somehow shot it in quarantine. <laughs> Uh, we, you know, NBA bubble style, like got everybody tested and, right. uh, you know, the whole nine yards to um, keep with uh, safety regulations for COVID stuff. Um, it was a teeny tiny crew. My dad directed it. Oh, uh, rad. Yeah, which was really, really fun. I'd never directly like collaborated with him before on anything. Uh, uh -huh. And like when I PA'd for a movie he made like five years ago. Or oh, you still didn't? Yeah. No, <laughs> uh, so, but this was our first like true collab, so to speak. It's sure. Henry Feet Dad. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it was really fun to work with him. Um, 
And it was me, my dad, a cinematographer, John, this, uh, my good friend, John Bellinger, who's incredibly talented, uh, and then uh, associate producer, um, grip AC guy uh, named Chris Johnson. Mm-hmm. So it was just the four of us. Uh, and we were up in Santa Barbara, where my dad's from, um, shooting it. And uh, I spent, we shot it over 48 hours, and I was in the ocean for probably 44 hours. I was <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was watching it. So you- Your entire life, my fingers were completely prune. Oh, my gosh. You're great at surfing, man. Like, that, that. <laughs> I was like, I watched it a couple of times. I'm like, is that really him? Or do they get like a standing guy? But no, that's totally you. Yeah, no, surfing's the only thing that I like unequivocally enjoy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like without any complication or baggage at all. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, good, man. Are you getting like pulled by a boat and that, that whole thing? Like, wow. Yeah, no, it was, it was cool. Um, you sort of like pretend the little wake of the boat is a wave and surf it. But yeah, I, I grew up, I've been surfing for longer than I've been playing. Sure. I stood up on a wave for the first time when I was like four years old. So. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. A lot wow. of talk about like when I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and shit in this interview. Well, that's uh, how you got to where you are, right? You had to be five before. <laughs> age at some point. Right, right. Right on, dude. Thank you so yeah. much for, for, for talking with me today, Henry. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah. can't wait for you to hear the album. I can't wait to hear it. I have one more question. I want to see if I can get an answer from you. Sure. For. Uh, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Gosh. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think entering the music business, and by that I mean like putting out music nowadays can like seem kind of daunting because there's so much. It seems like there's just this excess, you know, supply surplus of of music and of artists in the world. And I think that, you know, you can look at that as a negative because it's like, how the hell am I going to like break through, you know, <laughs> in this day? <laughs> possible because there's just so much going on uh so many different things to choose from for people but i think that there's also like an optimistic way to look at that which is that it's there's actually never been a time in music where you were more justified in like doing and producing music that makes you happy because that's the only thing that you can control um, and that you have any power over. And I think we have the least amount of control or influence or power over like what people listen to or what people end up hearing. So it's like not even really worth thinking about. And the only thing that's really worth thinking about is what you love and the kind of music that makes you happy. Um, so there's no, and I think that like that kind of originality of doing that, that inherently would come with doing that um is the kind of stuff that will break through you know um because people want to hear stuff that uh is new and like unique uh and i guarantee that if people like really listen to their it's so corny but it's true like listen to their hearts and like the music that's in them they're gonna come up with something that's original because like everyone's music is original like at its core i think um so yeah, I would say don't worry or like try to calculate what's going to be best or break through. Just do what makes you feel good and you're going to be successful. Bring it back.